The Noctua NH-C14S is another CPU cooler that was ahead of its time, with an official release date of 2015, thus it has been on the market for quite some time already. However, it is more relevant now than ever, as I've previously said in another review, the VRM heatsinks found on modern motherboards are barely adequate for low TDP CPUs, let alone for high power overclocking, that is, unless you have something special like an exclusive motherboard. The NH-C14A is a C-shaped top flow air CPU cooler, which is equipped with just a single 140mm fan, and it is compatible with all modern CPU sockets including AMD's M4 and the latest Intel LGA 1200 socket. We start with the overall look of the cooler, and it is business as usual, mainly because there is not really that much that you can do with a top flow air CPU cooler in terms of its design, and in this case, Noctua, as per usual, opted for performance instead of aesthetics. This means that there is no coating applied on the heat sink and no stickers or any plastic components found, such as for example a plastic shroud, which has been in fashion for quite some time now. One of the main advantages of these types of coolers is that the airflow generated by the fan is being pushed straight down on the VRM components of the motherboard, and thus it delivers a quite good indirect cooling for the CPU socket. The heatsink and the included fan have a combined weight of 1015 grams, which when all things considered, is heavier than other top flow air CPU coolers such as the Be Quiet Dark Rock TF which uses two fans. And this is one of the many factors that serve as a showcase for the build quality of this particular cooler, but more on that later on. However, before we get into anything specific, we need to look at what is included with the Noctua NH-C14S, and we start with the accessory box, which has a lovely design that lists and presents all the included accessories and the components of the mounting system down to the last screw and washer, which is rather nice. Now you just have to look at the diagram and know for sure if you've lost something or not. The accessories included with the cooler are the following, a metallic backplate, a metallic Phillips screwdriver, a Noctua case badge, a tube of thermal compound, a low noise adapter, and three different user manuals, each for its own main platform. You also get the components of the mounting system, which includes mounting brackets, screws, plastic spacers, and nuts, along other things which are part of the Noctua Secufilm 2 mounting system. The heatsink itself has a weight of 817 grams and uses both copper and aluminum in its construction. The said heatsink has approximately 65 cooling fins, which are basically the aluminum of the heatsink. These cooling fins are smooth on the edges and are also shaped to not only stack one on top of the other, but also to keep a straight edge. In addition, these also provide a solid frame for the heatsink as a unit. The top of the heatsink and the sides of the cooling fins feature gaps in the metal to allow for easy access of a screwdriver to the mounting system, in particular easy access to the two spring-loaded screws that hold the cooler attached to the mounting arms. This is one of the easiest ways to solve a problem that has been present for ages on many air CPU cooler, mainly to gain easy access to the mounting screws located below the heatsink and many manufacturers have tried many different things, including wrenches. The NH-C14S uses six copper-made heat pipes, and each has an outer diameter of 6 mm. The heat pipes are arranged in a standard C shape, and while they are made out of copper, they are also nickel-plated to protect the copper surface, increase its overall operating temperature, and also make sure that the heat pipes blend in with the rest of the design of the NH-C14S. The contact between the base plate of the cooler and the before mentioned heat pipes is achieved by soldering the two components together. This not only creates a very good thermal conductivity between these two surfaces, but also it increases the overall sturdiness of the heatsink, as there are minimal chances of the soldering flexing or breaking off. Still speaking of the heat pipes, the endings are not covered by anything. However, they do not need to, as Noctua decided to have them evenly machined so that they will match the rest of the cooler. Of course, having the endings of the heat pipes looking even, or that I say good, will not affect the cooling performance in the slightest. However, it is something that certain manufacturers do, and in this case, it speaks volume about the build quality and the attention to detail that is offered by Noctua. The base plate of the cooler is made from solid copper, which is then nickel plated, just like the heat pipes. The surface of the base has a sunburst pattern, which is most visible when direct light hits the surface of the base plate. This is merely a cosmetic feature and has no impact on the performance of the cooler, but it is nice to see that the attention to detail keeps on going. The used fan on this cooler is the Noctua NF-A14 PWM. 
This is a 140 mm fan which has a minimum rotational speed of 300 rpm and a maximum rotational speed of 1500 rpm. Of course, the maximum speed can be lowered to 1200 rpm with the help of the included low noise speed adapter. Other features found to this fan include the rubber pads placed on both sides of each corner. This will dampen any vibrations and also prevent any scratches on the aluminum fins of the heatsink. And another thing that should be mentioned is the usage of the Noctua SSO bearing system which is one of the best around especially in terms of reliability and low noise output. The cable of the fan is long enough to reach most fan headers found around the CPU socket on a standard ATX motherboard. The cable itself is covered by high quality sleeving and the connector used for powering the fan is a standard 4 pin. The SecuFirm 2 mounting system has been around for a while now, however it is still one of the best around not only because it offers a sturdy system for the CPU cooler to use, but also because it is very easy to install and work with. We start with the backplate, which is placed at the back of the motherboard and CPU socket. Then at the front of the motherboard, you insert the required plastic spacers, and then place the mounting arms over the studs and spacers. You then secure the arms with the included nuts and finally place the heatsink over the mounting arms and CPU socket. Then you just secure the spring-loaded screws of the heatsink on the mounting arms and you're done. Don't forget to attach the fan onto the heatsink and connect it to a fan handler on your motherboard. And here is the CPU cooler installed in our testing system, which uses a full ATX motherboard. The used CPU for all CPU cooler testing, unless otherwise stated, is the Intel i9-9900K running at its factory frequency and then overclocked manually to 5GHz on all cores. Before we get into the temperature testing, we need to have a sound test, and as is the usual with my reviews, you will get to see and hear how the cooler and the included fan sounds like when starting up from 0 rpm and then moving up in speed to its maximum. This is done to offer a better understanding of how each CPU cooler sounds like as a decibel reading while it is useful is not going to pick up unwanted noises such as bearing ticking or high pitch noises. In terms of the sound, the cooler reached a maximum sound level of 42 decibels measured at a distance of 10 cm away from the system and CPU cooler. This places the Noctua NH-C14S next to coolers such as the NH-U12A or the Silver Arrow IB Extreme. And we start our testing with the benchmark Intel Burntest V2, which provides a good load on the CPU, a load that is similar with what you can expect from a modern AAA video game. And in this test, the NH-C14S reached a maximum temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, with the ambient temperature at a fixed 26 degrees Celsius. This places the cooler ahead of the Be Quiet Dark Rock TF, which uses two fans instead of one. However, the real test comes next, and this involves the AIDA64 FPU stability test benchmark. This software will place an unrealistically high load on the CPU, something which you will not encounter in your daily usage, not even in video rendering. However, it is a good way to see the performance of each CPU cooler, as the benchmark pushes both the heatsink and the fans to their very limit. And in this test, the NH-C14S reached a maximum temperature of 87 degrees Celsius with the same ambient temperature fixed at 26 degrees Celsius. And again, the NH-C14S is ahead of the Dark Rock TF, but only just. And last but not least, we have the clearance of this cooler, and overall it is pretty good. The heatsink will cover the first RAM slot and interfere with the second slot, however, thanks to the shape of the heat pipes and the heatsink, there is still some space left above the RAM modules. The graphics card clearance is also very good, with ample space below the heatsink which makes it very easy to access the top mounted M.2 socket which is often installed below the CPU socket on most modern motherboards. The Noctua NH-C14S is available for around 75 US dollars or euros. And for that you get plenty. First of all, this cooler and many top flow air CPU coolers will help with the cooling of the VRM components found on the motherboard. Second of all, while it is not a small cooler, it offers a good clearance for both the RAM and expansion slots. The cooling performance itself is good for a cooler that has only a single fan, and the sound is also adequate with a peak of just 42 decibels. The Seco Firm 2 mounting system is one of the best around 
as it is not only solid but very simple and easy to use. The main advantage of the NH-C14S over other top flow air CPU coolers is its clearance and its ease of installation. An additional fan can be installed to increase the performance but that is a decision that you will have to make on your own as the second fan will increase the price of the cooler even more. If you liked this review then you can perhaps consider subscribing for more and also if you want to support the channel in a direct way then in the description below you can find both the Patreon and Subscriber Star pages of the channel.